Place value for decimals is very similar to place value for whole numbers, except that it goes in the opposite direction and has a slightly different ending. So for decimals, we start with tenths, then hundredths, then thousandths. The next place here, if there was a digit, would be the ten thousandths place. If we're given this value and we're asked to say or write the number in words, you would identify this as 46,502. We identify the decimal point with the word and. Then for the decimal part, you say the number 738. The last thing you do is you identify the place value of this last digit, which is thousandths. 46,502 and 738 thousandths. Taking a look at this example, it's very similar to the decimal part of what we just did. I've eliminated the whole number part, except that I've added a zero in here. So I shifted everything over one digit. So if you had to say what this number is, first you read the decimal part, 738 and then you identify the place value of the last digit. One easy way to identify that place value is if you put a one under the decimal point and a zero under each digit. I think you recognize this number is 10,000. So this is 738 ten thousandths. We'll look at two more here. Uh, notice I did not put a leading zero. Um, I did put it up here, but it's not required. So to say what this value is, first you just say the number 62. And then to identify that it's a decimal, you got to identify the place value of the last digit. If you put a one under the decimal point, this is a way of identifying the place value of the last digit is hundredths. So this is 62 hundredths. To identify this number, you would first say 14, and then you identify the place value of that last digit, which is thousandths. So this is 14 thousandths. I'll cover two more examples going from number to words. This is two and one tenth. Over here, negative six and two. Ten thousandths. In the previous six examples, we went from decimals to words. Now we'll go from words to decimals and to fractions as well. In fact, I'll start out with fraction. 206 ten thousandths, written as a fraction, you first write 206, and then you put that over 10,000. So I think you can see that writing this as a fraction is pretty straightforward. For the decimal, you first write 206, then for 10 thousandths, you have to make sure you have four decimal places. We'll do this one more time, going from the word to the fraction and also the decimal. 305 and and would indicate a decimal point or the beginning of a fraction. So we have 305 and 7 hundredths. For the decimal you first write 305 
a decimal point. You write the number 7. And then for hundredths, you have to make sure you have two decimal places. We went from numbers to words and words to numbers. Now we'll focus on converting from fractions to decimals. This helps to reveal what decimals are, which is fractions with power of 10 denominators. Notice this denominator is 10 to the first power. This denominator is 10 to the second power. This one, 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth, and this pattern continues indefinitely. So a decimal is actually a more efficient way of writing what's essentially a fraction, but the denominators are understood to always be powers of 10. The numerators can change, 8, 5, 7, but the denominators always have to be some power of 10. Going from fraction to decimal, when the denominators are powers of 10, is going to be pretty direct. You just write the number and make sure you have the appropriate number of digits. You have two zeros here, so you need two decimal places, which we have. I could put a leading zero, but you don't have to. For 83 thousandths, you first write your 83. You'll need three decimal places, so you simply put in a zero and a decimal point. For 19 ten thousandths, put in your 19 and make sure you have four decimal places. So we'll just need two more with our decimal point. 732 thousandths, we need three decimal places. 243 ten thousandths, we need four decimal places because there's four zeros. And finally, 6,402 ten thousandths. Notice I don't use a comma when I'm in decimals. And I have four decimal places, so I just put the decimal point right there. So when denominators are powers of 10, you can write the decimal without much trouble at all. When denominators are not powers of 10, one way to write the decimal is to just do what the fraction says. This is a shorthand way of writing 5 divided by 8. So we would calculate that but notice 8 doesn't fit into 5. So you put your decimal point right here. Whenever a number is written, if it doesn't have a decimal point, it's understood that the decimal point is sitting at the very end of it. Once you have a decimal point, you have to tell the world. Now you can put in as many zeros as you like. If I need more, I'll put more there. 8 goes into 50 six times. That's 48. Bring down your next digit. 8 goes into 20 twice. I need another 0. I can put as many as I like up here. Now you bring down that 0. 8 goes into 40 five times. So we can convert five-eighths to a decimal and it yields 625 thousandths. Often I'll just circle the answer. So to convert three-fourths to a decimal, it's really a shorthand way of writing three divided by four. 
which we calculate. This is 3 divided by 4. 4 doesn't fit, so we put the decimal point here. Tell the world. Put in a couple zeros. 4 goes into 30 seven times. Bring down a zero. 4 goes into 20 five times. So 3 fourths can be written as the decimal 75 hundredths. To convert from decimal to fraction, you'll simply rewrite it without the decimal point over the appropriate power of 10. So 75 hundredths, we put 75 and we'll need to account for both decimal places. So this will be 75 over 100. We can reduce. There's a common factor of 25, so you divide by 25. Divide by 25. And you get 3 fourths. Looking at this one, simply write 625. To make sure you have the right denominator, you can put a 1 under the decimal, a 0 under each digit. So I'll simply put a thousand in the denominator. And it might look like a lot, but there's a common factor of 25. So 625 divided by 25, it goes in twice. And 25 goes into 125 five times. So divide by 25 and you get 25. 25 goes into 100 four times, and then you just tack on that zero. 0. Still has a common factor of 5. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. And you land with 5 eighths. You might recall we started with 5 eighths earlier in the video, and we ended up with 625 thousandths. Taking a look at this one, we'll write our 13 and we'll be sure to put that over 10,000. And fortunately there's no common factor so that's in simplest form. If you're going from fraction to decimal with mixed numbers the whole number part is the same. Seven one hundredths would be a decimal point, and you need two decimal places ending with a seven. This one you don't have a power of ten denominator, so it's going to be a negative nine and then one divided by four. It doesn't fit. 4 goes into 10 twice. Bring down that 0. 4 goes into 25 times. So 1 fourth is the same as 0 0.25. Mixed number going from decimal to fraction you'll have negative 56 and 3 and you'll need a denominator of a thousand and fortunately nothing will simplify the last one's pretty straightforward 27 and 8 tenths but 8 tenths will simplify, so this is 27 and 4 fifths. I'll mention one thing real fast. This is the last item. Notice to find the 
decimal equivalent of one fourth, I did long division. If you realize that four times 25 is 100, you could multiply denominator and numerator by 25, and that'll give you 25 hundredths. And you can go from this to this directly. If you just want to do the long division, that will always work. But sometimes it's a little bit easier to just think of, how can I get this denominator to some power of 10? Either a 10, a 100, a 1,000. And then that makes fast work of the numerator. If you would like some practice with these concepts, if you're at my website, you can download a worksheet along with a detailed answer key.